Chapter 13, Virtual Reality, 1 The next day, although I tried to be as low-key as possible, people would occasionally steal glances in my direction. Right now we were in the middle of engineering class and I was actually trying to focus. The constant occasional glances were starting to get on my nerves. It was felt as if I was the main attraction inside of a zoo exhibit. Although this class was not particularly popular I found it rather fascinating. The concepts they were talking about were far more advanced than back in my previous world. But it was specifically because of this that I was so interested, hence why I was especially annoyed by the constant stares from the people in my class. I can't focus if you people keep staring at me. Using an angled mirror we split the two laser beams into two separate beams. This then forms an object beam and a reflected beam. Heading in different directions, both are reflected off of other angled mirrors, and using an F48 board and a G450 processor we can process the beams so that the software can detect human movements and as these two beams merge together holographic image is created. Well, it definitely was an interesting course but that didn't mean I could understand it. In fact, I only managed to grasp 1% of the contents of the course. Like what the hell was an F48 board or a G450 processor? I'll just stay and pretend that I understood everything that the professor said. It was a non-compulsory course anyways, therefore, I didn't really need to come here. Still, even though I did not understand anything, just the fact that they were exploring holographic technology aroused my interest. Such technology did not exist back in my world, as the best they could come up with were touchscreen phones. The technology back in my world was not advanced enough to come up with pure holographic devices. Ding. Dong. Oh my, it seems like the class has ended. I'll see you next time. Packing up her stuff, the engineering professor smiled and left the class. Not much was known about the engineering professor apart from the fact that she was apparently quite strong. Although she was no longer in her younger days, she had a complexion as fair as an unpolished jade with beauty, elegance, and grace that could only be achieved over years of maturity. Her silky brown hair that was tied in a braided ponytail calmly rested on her right shoulder. Her expression which always seemed to be smiling carried a hidden charm within that caused everyone to feel a motherly warmth from her. Even though I was the author of the book, many characters that I have met during my stay here were people that had never shown up in my story such as this professor. Having stayed here for about a week, I found this professor the most pleasing out of all the ones I've encountered so far. She was kind and didn't show preferential treatment towards certain students, unlike other professors who blatantly showed favoritism towards ones that were talented or had a huge backing. Most professors were geniuses that have once studied here or had several achievements under their belts. They all had their own pride and thus only actually paid attention to the top students whilst ignoring the mediocre ones. Although they didn't say it straight to our faces, the teacher's expression could tell it all. Why should I bother teaching you? Are you worthy? Even if we were not considered as outstanding as Kevin and the others, just the fact that we managed to enroll into the lock meant that they were capable individuals. Take the previous owner of this body as an example. Although he was one of the lowest ranked in the class if he were to go into any other academy he could have been considered as a medium high talent since D-ranked talents were still hard to come by these days due to the constantly decreasing population. The world was just not fair. Leaving the engineering class I calmly went back to my room to get changed. The next class was Tactical Cooperation a new course that utilizes virtual technology to train students. I was actually quite pumped for this class since virtual reality was something you could have only been able to find in movies and novels. Taking off my celestial blue uniform that indicated that I was in my first year, I took out a dark blue skin tight suit and put it on. Uniforms were separated into three different colors, celestial blue, dark green, and blood red. The celestial blue was only worn by first years, the dark green by second years, and the blood red uniform by third years. 
It was arranged as such so that this way guilds who came to observe slash scout students would be able to differentiate between first and third years. With third years being their primary target as they were only a year away from graduating. As I struggled to put on the skin tight suit I could only curse at the people who designed this suit. Comfortable was the last possible word that came into my mind as I tried putting on the skin tight suit. Let's not mention the fact that it took me around 5 minutes to put on the suit, but as the name suggests the suit was skin tight meaning that I could feel all my muscles getting tightly compressed by the suit. Wearing the suit made my movements become extremely stiff. Because it was so stiff it looked like I was walking like a robot, moreover, looking at my appearance in the mirror I wished I could find a place to bury myself. So embarrassing. Thankfully, the distance between my dorm and the tactical cooperation class was close, saving me from the embarrassment of being seen in the suit. The campus which covered an area of 5 km squared was divided into 8 sections, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. The lecture zone was located in the A section, and that area was where the lecture halls were located. It was located on the top left side of the campus and comprised of three oval-shaped buildings that were each the same size. The reason why there were three buildings was that the first year, second year, and third years were separated. The B section was a no-student area and it's where the professor's offices were located. If you needed to ask questions or meet the professor after class you would have to go towards the B section. It was located right next to the A section and consisted of one large compound with a tall glass pyramid-like building in the middle of the compound. The C section was where the labs and researching facilities were located. In order for someone to access the lab, they needed to be supervised by a professor in case something went wrong. Because of the dangers, the facility posed. The C section was located far away from the other sections and was enclosed in military grade defenses. The D section was where I was currently headed and it was where the virtual reality room was located. It was a room filled with capsules that each student could use to enter the virtual world. It was located underground and was a few kilometers away from the dorms, which were located in the E section. In the E section, Dorms were separated into five different buildings with each building bigger than the other. The furthest building and also the shabbiest looking one was the Golden Rat Building. It was the cheapest dorm on the campus and was where people that couldn't afford to pay for facilities stayed. Right next to the Golden Rat Building was the Horn Sheep Building and it was where I was currently staying. The conditions were a bit better than the Golden Rat Building. But it was still nothing compared to the next three buildings, Manticore, Hydra and Leviathan buildings. Starting from the Manticore building, each person had their own personal training facility installed inside of their room followed by a personal designated butler that catered to all their needs. The Hydra building, like the Manticore building, provided personal training facilities as well as a butler. However the training facilities were much more advanced and they also provided students with personalized meals and diet plans. The meals were all cooked by professional chefs, and the ingredients provided by them were all made from rare herbs and monsters. Lastly, there was the Leviathan Building. The only building that could be accessed with money. This was where the elites resided. No matter how rich you were, unless you proved that you were a one-of-a-kind talent you would never be able to step in here. This building was created in the hopes of nurturing future talents that could fight and fend off against the demons who are rampaging all over the world. Heavy emphasis was put on the creation of this building, as it was where the future pillars of humanity would be nurtured. Whatever you wanted, it was there. Training facilities, high-end food, butlers, swimming pool, VR rooms highly secured research facilities, if you felt like something was missing all you needed to do was just task and it would be built the next day. The G section is where the training facility was located and it was inside of a large squared architectural building. It was approximately 2 minutes away from section A, and 5 minutes away from the E section. 
because it was a public training facility one needed to book a spot in advance in order to use the facility. Lastly the H section, the area that contained the library as well as the cube. The cube was a forbidden area where only the highest ranked individuals could enter. The reason why it was considered a forbidden area was that it was where all the secret training manuals were stored, as well as godly medicine and herbs. Manuals that were comparable to the, Keiki style, were also stored inside of the facility further clarifying how important that area was. Arriving inside of the VR room, I noticed almost everyone walking in a robot-like manner causing me to lightly chuckle. Obviously, not everyone was like this, as some were leisurely walking in their tight skin suit indicating that this was probably not their first time using VR. Because we were wearing tight skin suits, the boys and girls were separated into different rooms, which is a bit of a letdown as I wouldn't have minded seeing Amanda and the others in that outfit. Actually on second thought scratch that. Since I was the author of the novel, I knew the personalities of the main characters the best, and thus I knew that if I were to catch a glimpse of them with that suit on, my days would be numbered. Alright, everyone please look over here. Similarly wearing a tight-skinned outfit the professor came into the room, gathering the attention of everyone present. Standing tall, with tidy black hair and a sharp look was the professor responsible for this class. He currently had a gentle smile on his face as he took out a small tablet and took the register. Looking at his calm gentle demeanor that made it look like he was the nicest person on earth, I secretly sneered. I know who you truly are. The professor who was in charge of the VR class was called Alphonse Stebo and was actually a major character for the first arc of the story. In short, he could be what was regarded as a mini-boss. Although he was not a ranked villain, he could be considered a difficult opponent for the current protagonist. The demon he signed a pact with was from the Shadow Tribe, which was a sub-branch of the Greed Clan which was one of the seven main clans of the Demon Clans. The demons were split into seven clans, each according to the seven heavenly sins known to mankind, pride, greed, wrath, envy, lust, gluttony, and sloth. Each clan was commanded by a demon duke which was as powerful if not more powerful than the top executives in the human domain, or equivalently SS ranks. Above them was the demon king, who at the moment could eradicate the whole of humanity with a swipe of his hand. However, Due to his enormous power, he was currently being restricted by various powers preventing him from entering the human domain. That was of course until the third calamity hits, which was when the true war between humanity and the demons would start. I was actually quite thankful for the fact that I was the lowest ranked in the class since it meant that minimal attention was placed on me. Apart from the occasional bullying, I was living quite a comfortable life. Unlike Kevin who was constantly under the watch of both the jealous classmates and villains who are wary of his overwhelming talent. Since everyone is present, I will start the capsules and you can enter when I say so. Seeing that everyone was present, Professor Tebow smiled and went towards his desk where a large monitor was present. Typing a few commands on the screen, he called out the names of each student separately. Rend over, please make way to capsule 55. Hearing my name being called, I contained my excitement and made my way towards my designated capsule. Ignoring the snickering coming from certain classmates, which whispered words such as bumpkin or other rude remarks, I excitedly approached my capsule. I could finally enter the virtual world which I could only see in novels and movies. Entering the capsule and adjusting the helmet on my head, I patiently waited for the professor's instructions. Student over is everything okay? Yes. Okay, the virtual simulation will start in 3, 2, 1. Tack. The last thing I heard was the sound of a key being pressed before everything went dark.